Hello and welcome. My name is Brian Kaplan, editor of The Banker. My guest today is J.R. Lowry, who heads up State Street's Global Exchange for Europe, the Middle East and Africa. The Global Exchange is State Street's provider of data and analytics. And we're going to be discussing the impact of big data on investing. So, J.R., we've heard a lot about big data and what it can do for investors. Is there a way you can kind of sort of summarize, you know, the big changes we're looking at? Sure. I, I, to me, big data means different things to different people, but at its core, all of this, I think, has its foundation in the digitization that's going on in the world right now. And digitization is bringing a lot more data to bear. It's bringing a lot more data more quickly. Uh, and while people focus a lot on the volume of the data that's been increasing exponentially, I think it's actually the variety of data that's going to have more impact on the investment industry than than just the volume itself. Okay, well, we're talking about things we've heard about satellite imagery and right. the Internet of Things. So right. tell us about some of these kind of exciting concepts. Yeah, well, all, all of these things that you referenced, Brian, the, the, the connected world and the Internet of Things, you know, whether it's sensors in, in crop fields or satellite imagery or cell phone data or social media data, there are many, many, many new sources of data that are available to investment professionals. And invariably, some of that is going to have investable insight in it. And if you're an investment prof professional, you need to be able to find the signal from the noise in all of that new data. So this, to me, means that an investment professional is going to have to figure out ways to bring all of that data in uh, and to bring a set of analytics to bear. And, and in some instances, you know, new analytic techniques, you know, using things like machine learning or deep learning, uh, and bring all of that to bear to help determine what drives their investment decision-making process and what doesn't. And those who do that well, you know, the ability to assemble massive amounts of information and sift through it, I think will be the more successful ones in the, in the new And we regime. must be in a period of kind of discovery at the moment, right? Because you can imagine that, you know, you could source a, a mass of data, but actually the way you analyze it and apply it could be completely misconstrued. It's true. There's a bit and of trial and error until we start to get it right. Yeah? It, uh, very much so. And, and I think we're in the early days of the Internet of Things uh, relative to where we could eventually go. Uh, and so to me, this is, a, it's, this is a generational change that will continue to come. But I think it's, it's somewhat of a pivot point that's going to drive change in the industry. And, and so, again, you know, if you're an investor, you've got to figure out ways to, to do that. But if you look at the investment industry as a whole right now, the ones who are who are really big data consuming, heavily quantitatively driven investment firms, they're a very small portion of the overall assets under management. So it's, it is very early. Because, I mean, what we were hearing about the investment management business was that it was busy going from active to passive and, and cheap sort of exchange traded funds. Whereas this is a move in the other direction, isn't it? Yes and no. I think to some extent, some of these passive techniques could be very quantitatively driven too. Uh, you know, I, I, I think in general, what we see happening to some extent is is a shift toward passive and a shift toward the kind of boutique active. And, you know, that may end up meaning that firms that are in the middle, you know, not big enough really to have the scale that the largest players in the industry have, uh, but not bringing, you know, a really differentiated investment style to bear may end up, you know, being stuck on the fence. And I, I think to some extent that's why we're seeing some of the consolidation going on in the industry right now because there's, there's something of a race to scale. Okay, now tell me what you're doing at State Street and how you're responding to these changes. Yeah, so for us, you know, digitization and big data, I'll, I'll talk more about digitization. Uh, we think of it in our core business. We think of it in new businesses like the global exchange business that I run here in, in Europe uh, and also in some of the leading technologies that are out there. We have a five-year transformation program that we started last year that we call Beacon. Uh, and Beacon is really our digitization transformation program. And you know, the intent is to deliver better, newer tools to our staff, newer tools to our clients, and allow them to personalize what they, they get in the experience, uh, whether it's on a mobile device or a, a tablet or a laptop or a desktop. And you know, we're in the foundational stages of that program, but already we're seeing operational benefits. Uh, for example, you know, faster delivery of, of pricing every night to our clients. You know, then you've got our business that, that I run here, Global Exchange, which, as you said earlier, is a data and analytics business. So we've, we've really put data in the middle of our business, and we're using it to help clients in, uh, raise assets, to manage risk and compliance, to uh, improve their cost efficiency, uh, and to improve their, the performance of their funds. And so for us, everything really starts with data. 
And then at the leading edge, we've got an emerging technology center. It's been very focused on blockchain. Uh, we started it back in late 2015. Uh, but they're now also starting to add to their agenda, looking at things like cognitive computing and machine learning and the human-machine interface, because some of these things won't be you know, all machine-driven. They'll be somewhat of a hybrid model. Uh, and also, you know, just how user experience will change data security, infrastructure security. So you know, whether it's in our core business or in new businesses like Global Exchange or you know, more at the leading edge of technology, you know, we've really got a very broad agenda across the company that, that we're embarking on at the moment. JR, thanks very much for sharing your ideas with us. Sure, happy to be here. Thanks, Brian.